There we go. See the room filling up. It's going to be a popular session. Yep. So if you have a seat next to you, try to look friendly. Get one of these folks in the back of the room to sit down. Otherwise, the back of the room is going to get very crowded in the next couple minutes. And then I'll just like awkwardly call you out and make you come up to the front. So Josh Miller's up here. His seat's next to him. He's very friendly. Like, I mean, they've clearly underestimated the drawing power of memory management in PHP and how incredibly popular it is. Okay, okay, I think there's a single premium seat right in the very front here, if anyone wants. That's it. Be brave. Right there. I did a talk last year on like, uh, social anxiety and stuff. Uh, this is not that one. Um, so we're st we'll still work through it anyways. But, uh, okay, uh, this is uh, PHP and you know, how memory works in it, basically. Um, so my name is Sean McCabe. Um, I will be talking about uh, basically mm, sort of how PHP uh, handles memory. When you declare a variable, what does that mean? When you have an array, an object, what does that mean? How does that differ between um, versions of PHP? Uh, when does memory get released? Um, it, it should be fairly entry level, um, as long as you have some experience with programming languages. Um, and just give you kind of the basics of if you're doing stuff, what is happening you know, with memory behind the scenes and, and what are you uh, using, especially with something like Drupal that is very memory intensive and oftentimes that can be uh, a big problem. Um, first of all, we'll just talk about how memory works in PHP or in most dynamic languages um, in compared to something that's more static uh, like uh, C or C++. Um, in C, uh, you don't really, you declare everything about the variable. So you declare what type it is, you know, how long the array is going to be, anything like that. Nothing is dynamic. So you're not really storing a lot of that information attached to each variable. You don't need to know, is this a string? Is it an object? Is it an array? Um, you know what it is. It's, it's a string or it's a character array or it's a, an integer. Um, and so that generally makes it more lightweight. Um, whereas in a dynamic language like PHP, it can be anything and it can change. It can be an integer and then it can be something else, it can become a string, it can even become an object, or, um, and so that means there's a lot of data stored um, to keep track of that information as well. So that, um, you know, if you're just, you know, storing, you know, the number one, um, you're actually storing more than just like a single um, piece of data. You're not doing just like a, you know, 32 bit, uh, bits of data or, you know, even like a, you know, an eight bit. Uh, str um, you know, small int or something like that, um, you have this more flexible amount of uh, memory, but that means it's also more memory. Um, if you're doing something like an array, um, which we'll touch on a little bit more later, um, that is even more information because the array is somewhat of a variable itself, so it has information on itself, um, and then it also has you know, like uh, how many items it holds um, and stuff like that. And then each item in the array also, you know, is a variable, so it has to know, you know, what type am I and all that same metadata because it's not just uh, an array of integers or something, it's an array of anything. 
Um, so you can see I sort of uh, did a little bit showing up there that um, you know, you're basically just storing the data in something like CSV in something like C or C++. Um, and in PHP, you are storing all this metadata as well, um, which if you're storing you know, big, huge strings and stuff like that, it's probably a very small piece. But if you're storing lots of um, small chunks of data you know, in a bunch of big arrays, um, you can have a lot of uh, memory used up just in overhead um, versus um, in the data itself that you're storing. So you have to think of more than just what you're storing, but how you're storing it. Um, so like I said, a little bit more um, on arrays. So that means if you, if you put something in an array and you, you, know, you want to store a whole bunch of it and you want to loop through it or something like that, um, that's not necessarily always uh, a good thing to do because it's not um, a really cheap way to store something. Whereas if you come from a different programming language, it is a cheap way to store something. Um, in a different language, you're storing a pointer to the first instance, and that's it. So you have almost no overhead whatsoever. So arrays, especially like of a fixed size, are a really, really efficient way to do that. And in PHP, it's, it's pretty much the opposite. Um, they, they give you no extra efficiency there. They're, uh, I mean, that's not completely true. There are, like, through the Zend memory management stuff, they, they do some tricks. But um, I got some data that I'll show at the end. And in general, it's, you're going to use a lot um, more memory for that. Um, there is actually, no, almost no one knows this, but um, you can declare static uh, arrays in PHP um, that have a fixed uh, length, um, and they are more memory efficient. Um, you only use them when you like really know the length of something, and, and you can do that. Um, but they will actually save you some memory. Um, I didn't link that in here, but if you look up uh, like fixed length arrays in PHP, um, you will get it. Um, so this is now how PHP tracks memory, so how it releases memory, because you don't necessarily have to um, unset or clear any memory that you create. Um, just once it is no longer used, it will be freed. And so how PHP tracks um, what it's uh, doing for memory and, and whether something is used or not is based on what references it. This is very similar to how something like Java uh, does it as well. Um, so if it doesn't necessarily delete something, it just uh, removes a reference, and if there are no references to something, then it removes it. Um, for example, like if you call unset, um, you are not freeing the memory. All you are doing is removing that reference, and if you remove all the references and they go to zero, then the memory will be freed. So you're not necessarily by running an unset clearing that memory. It's, it's not like calling a delete or something in C++. Um, I come from a, my original background is, is like C, C++, so um, I'll reference that a bit, and also I know sort of how memory works there when you manage it much more directly, um, whereas PHP where it's sort of uh, obfuscated and, and with the nature of the language, you don't work on it directly really at all. Um, so we'll see here sort of in this example, um, if I you know, set a simple variable uh, to the string test, um, that's fine. That variable points to the memory that stores the word test. Um, that's easy. And then if I set um, a new variable to that same variable, and they're actually just a reference, PHP will do that automatically. So both of those are just a reference to um, the string test. And so if I go and I unset i, um, I'm not actually freeing that up. That, that uh, data is still stored there. All I'm doing is removing the reference of i. It, it basically does like a ref count minus minus is, is pretty much all it's doing. Because um, each variable keeps track of how many things reference it. Um, uh, the reference doesn't go that way. It's the variable will say I'm referenced four times or something. You can get uh, into some issues with circular dependencies where like a parameter of um, an object references a different object which has a parameter which references the original object. And then you can't, even if you delete both of them, they each still have one reference to them. Um, and that's where garbage collection and stuff like that will run and, and figure that kind of thing out and clean that up. So that kind of stuff won't even get cleared up on uh, unset. It will just get cleared uh, when garbage collection runs. But, uh, if you see here, and then at the end, um, once we finally unset uh, J as well, then there is no more reference um, to that data, and uh, the memory will be cleared. And so it's, it's not, you don't have quite a direct control, and you have to keep track of your uh, references. Um, actually, pretty specifically, even though it's, uh, PHP doesn't have pointers, and so it seems like you don't have to do that, um, if you have stuff hanging around you know, in globals or in fun uh, variables that are of a higher scope than what you want, you can be holding on to memory um, for a lot longer than you intend to. Um, and then, so now we'll talk a bit about how PHP uh, allocates memory, as in PHP, the language, running. Um, so it's not as direct as you might think. So if you declare a variable, 
um, you know, we're not allocating necessarily that much worth of, um, so if we, you know, do something that's like four characters and a, you know, null terminator or whatever, like you're not, um, doing like, you know, five, you know, sets of 32 bits or whatever you're, um, or like we said, doing more metadata, but also it's going to have pre-allocated stuff in various chunk sizes, um, ahead of that. Uh, so it's going to, always have some memory sort of sitting there allocated to the program waiting to be used. And then there's a whole bunch of logic that basically dictates um, how it should grab more memory um, and you know, when it should do that and how much it should grab. Um, which, and that's pretty much all done for performance reasons because declaring and grabbing memory constantly um, can be quite slow, which I'll, I'll show some data later on that we'll cover as well. Um, and so there are even there are three types uh, of how it will um, allocate that, and then even within the small one, uh, the small is anything under 4,096k, um, I think, and um, it will do them in a whole series of uh, chunks. You know, anywhere from like you know eight bytes, I think, you know, up, and then eight, sixteen, thirty-two, um, all the way up quite a bit, and that will be sort of based on either what you're allocating or what it expects you to be allocating. Um, so if you, if you do something like say you uh, run in a, a loop of like a thousand times and um, you keep adding to an array each time you go through this loop, like you just add another element to the array, um, it will adjust how it allocates memory. So for like the first five times of that loop, you know, it'll only allocate a small amount and then it will allocate twice as much the next time and then twice as much the time after that and more the time after that because it's trying to sort of predict, okay, you're using memory really aggressively, so we're going to allocate it um, more aggressively to try to sort of keep up with you so we have it sort of ready to go instead of having to sort of grab it from the operating system um, as you're going. So you'll notice if you try to track memory in PHP, it's very difficult because things you do don't necessarily correlate exactly with the memory usage you're seeing because it's trying to sort of allocate memory ahead of time uh, for you. So you can say, okay, well, I did like one change and then now suddenly it shows that I'm using, you know, a whole megabyte, you know, more memory. Why is that? I added one variable, and it just might be that you hit a threshold and it's allocating differently. So, um, the large and the huge ones are actually if you have to go, um, you know, and allocate really, really big amounts of memory, and they will actually internally use a different memory mapping functions um, in the C layer of PHP that's built to, um, for performance reasons. And honestly, that gets a little beyond my area of expertise. Um, I am not a PHP core developer, in case anyone was under any illusions. Um, PHP also does a thing called write on copy. So like I showed before, everything is, um, pretty much everything in PHP is kind of like a reference. Um, it's not sort of exactly the same as a reference in a, in a more specific programming language. But um, like we showed here, if I have you know, two variables and they both point to the same thing, my data test there, um, there's only one set of it. And if I go change one of those variables, that's when it's going to suddenly make a copy. So the var variable j was only just pointing to what variable i pointed to. And then once I change i to something else, we know it was not intended for j to also be that thing. Um, so then it makes a copy, um, which it uses for j, and then it um, does something new for my i variable. Um, and so even when your not declaring variables, but you're just changing things around, it can actually be writing uh, memory. Um, and this can actually be kind of tricky if you have like a, you know, objects and stuff that you're passing around um, into functions. And so normally if you pass something into a function, you don't need to pass it by reference because it is a reference already. Um, and it will be very memory efficient. It won't like say if you're passing a whole node around, it won't make another copy of that node each time you chain it down into a different function um, until you edit it at which case then it will write on, or it will uh, write on copy, and you will start making copies of things, and you will be using more memory then. So you just have to be um, somewhat conscious of how that works, because you can unintentionally uh, cause a lot more memory to be used when maybe you uh, don't need to. Maybe it's something you save in a temporary variable instead. It's, it's very situationally dependent, but it's just um, something to keep in mind. Okay, um, we're going to talk a little bit about how memory changes in uh, different versions of PHP. As you guys probably know, um, things changed up pretty dramatically in uh, PHP 7. Um, performance pretty much doubled, memory usage pretty much cut in half. Um, and a lot of that has to do with how they uh, handle memory, um, where there was, you know, it wasn't a as much performance work put into that in uh, the five branch of things, and in seven there was a lot. Um, 
uh, they more aggressively cache or they more aggressively allocate memory, um, but then they also more conservatively use it and there's a bunch of optimization. So if you get into huge arrays and things like that, we don't quite use the same amount of memory um, that we used to. Uh, so I'll pop into some data here um, that we can actually go through and I think hopefully we'll have a few minutes for questions at the end here. Um, so this is memory usage of a very simple uh, program. It's basically running that one line uh, that you see there. Um, I did a C version there for comparison. It's obviously not running that line because that's a PHP line, um, but it's doing essentially the same thing. Um, so like in the first one, we're just uh, you know, creating a, an array basically of a very small range and then we increase the range um, as it goes up. Uh, I wanted to go up um, you know, by factors of 1,000, uh, but the last one is only um, 100 million. It's not a billion because a billion causes my computer to explode. Um, as you'll see, because uh, I do not have 130 um, gigs of RAM, so uh, that wasn't going to work. Um, if you'll see uh, for the first column when we're doing something very small, um, newer versions of PHP are actually less memory efficient because they are more aggressively um, allocating memory. So, um, and they, they cache more things and stuff. So you'll see we actually we only use 14 megabytes in uh, the old 5.6, and we're going to use 25 um, in 7.2. Um, as you'll see, for sort of a, almost an unfair comparison, C uses uh, 700K um, because it, it basically just does a loop and nothing else. Um, this, uh, just as a note, these do also output. Um, just, there's a little bit of output involved in these test scripts, so that does um, have a minor effect on this data, but it's pretty negligible. Um, as we go along, though, in the data, you'll see that um, where uh, newer versions of PHP were less efficient, they become drastically uh, more efficient. Uh, you'll see the difference um, between uh, Drupal 5 and Drupal 7 being, you know, 3 gigs to 13 gigs. You know, so that's even well above the, um, you know, the estimated sort of halving of memory that they said. Obviously, this is a bit of a staged example, um, and, you know, not something like Drupal, although in benchmarks and stuff, you know, I use uh, a half to a third um, in running comparisons between uh, 5.6 and uh, 7.0. Um, You'll see, though, that the differences between the uh, versions of PHP, the memory usage has stayed pretty much the same. There's a 10 megabyte difference um, in my uh, biggest test there, you'll see, but uh, that could well be you know, based on how, it's, how it happened to run and stuff like that. If you run these, you won't get necessarily these exact values. It depends on your system, and also like if I run them multiple times, these are an average, because um, they will allocate slightly differently depending on your block sizes available and stuff. Um, a little bit of a note there uh, for the last C example um, is I wasn't, I actually had to do that um, uh, with a multi-dimensional array because uh, you can't make an array that has um, 100 million uh, entities in it in a standard sort of C setup. There is a cap actually um, to how much you can fit in. It's based on like an integer size times four of the bytes that it has to point to and, and stuff. So um, that's actually done in two setups, but the test should be pretty much uh, functionally the same. Um, so that's a win for PHP, if we weren't clear. Um, it's better than C. It's faster in that very specific use case. <laughs> okay, thank you. That was a joke. You guys were a little, a little slow on that one, but you know. Um, and this one, which was actually uh, not what I intended to do um, in my talk initially, but uh, the speed um, is actually quite uh, significant in the allocation of memory. So the same test program that I was talking about, this is how long it took it to run. Um, and if you'll see, uh, for the initial stuff, it's basically the same. It's a small fraction of a second. Um, again, C is a bit faster, but it's, it's all almost uh, negligible because it's so small. Um, with uh, newer versions of PHP 7 actually being slightly slower for a very simple program. Uh, but you see, as it goes up, um, it gets bad. Uh, so um, for 7.2, it actually doesn't. Um, you'll see, weirdly, it um, got a little faster as it went on. I assume that was just a quirk in the data, um, or maybe it gets warmed up, I don't know. Um, uh, hey, cache warming is an actual term. That one wasn't a joke, okay? But, um, it kind of was. Uh, and you'll see in 5.6, though, um, the speed gets atrocious really quickly. Um, so where all the other versions are doing it in a small fraction of a second, we're already up to 250 milliseconds um, just for allocating some memory. And you know, that's a fair bit. That's, that's maybe the time it should take you know, to um, fully uh, render a whole Drupal page um, or like fully uh, build it in PHP. Um, and that's just doing a very simple uh, array allocation. And then if you'll see, um, if we do it in a really big size, um, it basically starts to break 
uh, down and it doesn't all it starts to sort of thrash and doesn't allocate memory very well um, so it goes to five minutes and anything over that basically ceases to work um, in PHP 5 on my laptop which is running 16 gigs of RAM um, whereas the other ones uh, if you see they maintain a very consistent thing you know um, even when uh, creating a hundred million records we only go to uh, you know 700 milliseconds um, which for doing such a big amount of data is pretty reasonable. And if you see, we don't actually get that far off um, from a C program, which is running in uh, 300 milliseconds. So we're getting fairly comparable performance um, to what is probably about the fastest way we could do this aside from maybe, I would say aside from writing it in pure assembly, but at that point that C is gonna compile down to basically pure assembly. So it, that's pretty much as fast as we can go. Um, the uh, we're sort of um, uh, We'll probably go with questions now. We're we got a little bit of time here. We got it's supposed to be twenty five minutes, so I got about five minutes here. If anyone wants to do questions, um, I'm a big nerd for memory, so I can probably answer most things. But um, like I said, not a PHP developer. And remember, we were all working on our social anxiety, so feel free to ask questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> Uh, thanks for the class. Um, so I was kind of hoping you were going to cover memcache a little bit and how that works with uh, PHP memory. So I'm, I'm coming across an issue which um, mm -hmm. there's just like an endless amount of cache render memory problems with which I thought would have been solved with using volatile memory like memcache. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I wanted to know what your thoughts are on the best way to profile and track down the issues um, so I can isolate the problem? Uh, I mean, a Valgrind setup is pretty good. Uh, New Relic, to be I don't work for them, but shameless plug, uh, that stuff is pretty good, and so it will help you grind down. Um, if you're having memcache or Redis um, problems, though, a real big thing to look at is that uh, you are not cycling through your cache too quickly. Um, if you don't have enough excess space there, you can be writing and deleting from cache uh, way too often. Um, and everything will still run because, of course, it just discards the oldest things, but you can be discarding things uh, too often, um, and then you'll, you'll thrash quite badly. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So uh, I guess what I'm noticing is certain slabs and um, mm -hmm. that basically the cache looks like the memory cache is starting over, so it's, it's not mm -hmm. like it's using cache. It's just... So it's like endless growth of memory that never stops. Um, so I don't know if that's because not enough memory allocation. So then, um, you know, the, the PHP processes and, and so forth. So I, I guess it's a it's a personal problem, but I, I just want to know how I could track it down because I'm seeing like a certain slabs that it gets reset. So yeah, it, it can be a little difficult. We, we've done similar performance stuff for that, um, and. It's, you know, doing the vowel grinds and things like that and see where stuff is allocated. But I would definitely try um, in very specific uh, small use cases um, and then uh, see how it is performing in cache, where your, where your reads and writes are and stuff like that. So, you know, is, what's the age of stuff in cache? If it's moving through quite quickly, um, then you can get a lot of that. Um, you can also get things where uh, you'll cache stuff that you don't really want to cache, like uh, forms and stuff like that, which, which aren't really cached. They're more of a... Uh, like a data store, basically, and, and you'll get stuff that just builds and builds and builds and, and won't flush out. Um, although you should sort of be having stuff clean up for your cache settings. I mean, it shouldn't, it, even if it fills up, it should automatically flush out. Um, probably more of a specific problem, but anyways, sorry. Next question. Uh, thanks. Um, are there one or two common mistakes that we as developers uh, are probably making that we can go Google how to stop making them? You use too many damn arrays. Um, pretty much. Um, <laughs> honestly, it's like uh, everyone uh, imagines that uh, loading data like from the database or something is really slow, and so it's, it's the best to just keep everything um, in memory, and that is true to an extent. You know, like caching a couple of nodes or something is good, but if you're running a big report or something like that, it's probably a lot more efficient to pull a single row, deal with that row, and then free it, and then move along again. Um, that is by far the biggest um, uh, mistake that uh, we have staff make internally, um, is just, you put it in memory and it's fast, and it's like, okay, well, it's always a trade-off. Um, and oftentimes, you, especially if you don't need, if a report runs in, 
one second or one and a half seconds or something, you know, versus if, if it explodes the server or not. You know, I'll go with the not exploding version. Um, so uh, that's, I, I guess you want a two, but I would say that's probably the very biggest one. Oh, this is great, thanks. And, I, and for profiling tools, I just throw in Blackfire is great, although I don't work for Sensio, and it's really expensive if you mm -hmm. start using it a lot. Um, but it's great. Uh, mm -hmm. So the thing that always makes me wonder if I'm doing something wrong is mm -hmm. like in Drupal 7, you, if you just needed to like iterate over a number of entities and like grab their mm -hmm. a certain field off of it, you could load a field without loading the whole entity. Mm -hmm. And now entity API is like, you have to get all the things all the time because it loads into a particular object and they're all dependent on one another. Like if you do an entity, if you do a load off of storage, you have to get the whole thing. Yeah, which it kind of isn't the best app. Although a lot of it is sort of like um, just in time loading. So like if you grab it or you look at it, then it will uh, fill it out, but it'll only have sort of like a essentially a stub for a lot of that data. Like if you have, you know, any entity references and stuff like that, they will fill out if you if you try to use them, but they won't be filled out until you do that. That's a weird thing where also you can screw up your stuff by measuring it. Um, uh, that was a quantum <laughs> it's physics It's Schroding, Schrodinger's yes. cat, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so is there anything to do differently there? And I guess the other question is like, is the therefore what to maybe use some of these like iterable array object kind of things that are in that are in yeah, PHP and it's to, to what you need, and do you even need the whole entity? Um, to be honest, it's like, can you, you know, just load something more specific? You know, sometimes if you need to be really performant, it is, you know, maybe I'll just pull a piece from the database or something. Then loading full entities, entities are really nice and fun and great to work with, and they do all the, you know, permission stuff and everything else that's attached to them. But sometimes you have to go uh, away from that if you're doing something that it's really important that it be performant, and it might do like instead of one entity, it's going to load, you know, ten thousand entities. Um, also, be uh, be aware that you can. If you're loading a whole bunch of entities over and over, um, make sure you set the flag so when you load them, they're not cached. Um, because if you try to load uh, a thousand things and you don't set that flag, you have a thousand of them sitting in like memory, um, which will take up a ton of space and you won't, especially if you're not accessing them again, you're gaining absolutely no advantage from that. Um, so make sure you load them and then discard them immediately. So um, that's Disc it for both Discard is in on set them? Uh, well, even if you just, there's there's flags in most of the loading functions for uh, entities and stuff in both Drupal 7 and 8, um, and there's like a cache flag, and you set it to false, and then it won't put anything into cache to begin with, so. And then so you don't have to unset it. The minute you stop using it, it's going to clear uh, automatically. So like if you have a variable called like, you know, blog, and you set it to a node, and then you loop through it, and you set blog to a new node, um, the old one, once you stop using it, it's going to be cleared out of memory automatically. But if we're dumping it all into cache, it goes into literally a big array of um, nodes, and those just sit there for the whole page load, and, and it can just go crazy with the memory. So you uh, pointed out that if you have to store lots of small things, you're going to incur the most overhead. Mm -hmm. um, so suppose I have to store lots of small things and I care about that. Is there like anything I can do about it at all? Like some crazy <laughs> hack, like let's make a big binary blob and then like, is, mm -hmm. does anything like that exist in PHP uh, or am I just host? The one thing that comes kind of close is like I said, you can use a fixed uh, length array. Mm -hmm. And so then it will use less, um, at least for the array overhead, uh, and just generally the way PHP works, each variable is a dynamic variable, and so it's going to have that data. Most of the performance fixes are in how they fix the underlying memory management architecture, yeah. which, like I showed, has improved. Your ability to do that as a programmer yourself is, is a bit limited. Putting it into a big blob um, is going to be slightly more memory efficient, but it's probably going to be way less CPU efficient, and so your trade-off is going to be worse overall. Yeah. Plus, okay. it's just more of a pain in the ass. Just checking. Thanks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You mentioned um, that PHP basically uh, guesstimates mm -hmm. uh, how much memory uh, you intend on using. Like you gave the mm -hmm. example with the array and um, you know yep. adding mm -hmm. elements to the array. I was wondering if PHP does the same thing with uh, object properties as well as methods. Does it kind of guesstimate? Uh, from as well? my understanding, it does the same thing for basically any time you're allocating memory. Um, so anytime you're adding a variable to any, like, or you're declaring stuff, it's going to sort of monitor your memory usage and then just try to increase the space. So that's objects, uh, variables, anything. anything that gets used. Um, you can uh, fiddle around with some of the settings for that, like um, sizes for when it'll use certain you know chunk objects and things like that, and what your limits are and stuff. Um, although for the most part, you just try to not use a lot of it. <laughs> are there mm -hmm. any ways to override this default guesstimation? Are there any contexts where you may or may not want that? Um, 
you can configure it somewhat um, for like when it should and how uh, like what thresholds there are. I don't know if you can lock it down or not. Um, I didn't think to look into that. Um, that would be a pretty low level language thing. I think that is pretty much built in. And I don't think there's a config, but I wouldn't uh, stake my language. life on that. It's built into the language itself? Yeah, like it's right in, if you, I actually linked to it, um, and, I'll, and if, I'll post the slides later, but okay. uh, on the allocation um, uh, code page, basically, for the memory allocation stuff that's written in C, um, there's actually a weirdly helpful uh, comment block at the top that talks a lot about how it does that um, memory allocation. Um, and it's like, it's almost a tutorial, which is kind of surprising because um, it's just hidden in a comment block. It's, it should be a blog post. But if you Google, like, how PHP um, allocates memory, like, you don't get squat so 